This is the Whole Care Network. Helping you tell your story one podcast at a time. Content presented in the following podcast is for information purposes only. Views and opinions expressed in this podcast are solely those of the host and guest and may not represent the views and opinions of the Whole Care Network. Always consult with your physician for any medical advice and always consult with your attorney for any legal advice. And thank you for listening to the Whole Care Network. I hope that we can tear down this broken system and re- rebuild it so that it it's people over profit and not profit over people. Caring for aging parents or other loved ones while working, raising children, and trying to live your own life? Wondering how to find the time for your personal health and happiness? Well, you're in the right place. Welcome to the Happy Healthy Caregiver Podcast, the show where real family caregivers share how to be happy, and healthy while caring for others. Now, here's your host, family caregiver and certified caregiving consultant, Elizabeth Miller. Hello, thanks for tuning in to the Happy Healthy Caregiver podcast on the Whole Care Network. If this is your first time listening, welcome. This is a podcast produced bi-weekly to help family caregivers integrate self-care and caregiving into their lives. Each episode has an accompanying show notes page, so if you'd like more details about the topics, products, and resources we speak about, you'll find the show notes by going onto the website, happyhealthycaregiver.com, and underneath the podcast menu, click the image for today's show. I am so grateful to you, my listeners. Your ratings and reviews have helped expand the show's reach and impact more caregivers' lives. If you haven't left a rating or review for the podcast yet, please consider doing so by visiting bit.ly forward slash HHC pod review. They can just be a sentence or two like this five-star review from Jen P who says, this is a go-to podcast for anyone caring for family members in complex times. Sharing our stories and having accessible resources will get us through this growing crisis. Before we get into today's Caregiver Spotlight episode, I want to first shine the light on our episode sponsor, Rare Patient Voice. Do you want to earn cash in exchange for your opinion? Researchers recognize that the true disease experts are those living with a condition and their family caregivers. Rare Patient Voice, or RPV, helps connect researchers with patients and family caregivers for over 700 diseases and conditions. For patients and caregivers, RPV provides the opportunity to voice their opinions to improve medical products and services while earning cash rewards. Rare Patient Voice, helping patients and caregivers share their voices. If you are interested, join the RPV panel at rarepatientvoice.com forward slash happy healthy caregiver. Today's guest is Susie Singer Carter. Susie cared for her mom, Norma, for 16 years until she passed away last July from Alzheimer's disease. Susie is a multi-award winning filmmaker, actor, and caregiver advocate. You can see all of these skills intertwined in her 2018 Oscar qualified short film, My Mom and the Girl, starring Valerie Harper in her final performance. Susie also produces and hosts the Love Conquers Alls podcast and is the co-creator of the outrageous horror comedy narrative podcast, I Love Lucifer. She's currently producing a documentary, No Country for Old People, which centers on long-term care neglect and the systemic healthcare crisis responsible for it. In this episode, we dive deep into Susie's current documentary project and the stories surrounding it. Susie also reflects on some of the toughest years of her life and the essential, totally accessible self-care tools which have helped make Susie's 16-year caregiving season sustainable. Enjoy the show. Hi, Susie. Welcome to the Happy Healthy Caregiver podcast. Hello, Elizabeth. How are you? Good. I'm excited about this conversation. The last one I'm going to be having for 2022. So yes, this will be um, one of the first podcast in 2023. So I'm excited about that. 
I oh, happy we, new year. <laughs> I know. Happy new year. We um we always start up episodes with a little inspiration from the happy healthy caregiver jar. So I wanted to give you get your thoughts on this, Susie. It says Oh, so many want to be shared today. Let's pick this guy. Okay, it says sometimes I need to go off on my own. I'm not sad. I'm not angry. I'm just recharging my batteries. And uh, that's amazing. I love that. Yeah, I think sometimes we just need our own space. I know, I don't know what you classify yourself as, Susie, but I call myself a outgoing introvert. Like I love people and I'm a giver of my energy, but then I have to retreat and restock by writing and reading and having some alone time. I could go along with that. I think that 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 resonates with me. Yeah, I think that that's that makes a lot of sense because because people that are extroverts, are, you know, we we spend a lot of energy, and we don't realize it because it because we enjoy it, right? And then you're like, why am I so burnt out? Because you can get burnt out because yeah. you, you you it's just it is it, it you don't realize how much energy it takes. <laughs> Well, to be on, and you're you're on a lot. You, you're you know you've got the podcast. You have your your filmmaking career. Your multiple podcasts, I should say, and uh-huh. you're in the spotlight a lot. So it is. It's like it can be it can be draining. Well, I want to you know we introduce you in the in the intro a little bit, but I would love for you to share a little bit about your caregiving story with your mama, Norma. Ah, uh, okay. Well. Oh, this isn't it Alzheimer's? Well, Alzheimer's is a long journey sometimes anyway. So how to truncate that? I mean, how long was your journey with, with her, with your mama? Six, 16 years. 16 oh my years. gosh. You're yes. close to the record. I think I've heard 18, I think might be the record of somebody that I was coaching. That's a yeah. long time, Susie. Like how have you made this sustainable? It's, you know, it it was a it was a learning process. It was such a learning process for me, and I made so many mistakes along the way, so many. Because you know, sixteen years ago, I I knew this much about Alzheimer's. I really didn't know anything. I mean, I think I met one of my mother's friends' mother who was at Thanksgiving dinner with us, who played piano brilliantly. But every time she saw me, would say. Oh, hello. Who are you? <laughs> so I love your hair. And I go, oh, hi, Esther. It's, I'm Susie. And I'd reintroduce myself. And I thought, oh, my God, my mom has this disease. This is what it is. That's all I knew. That's all you knew. That's all I knew. And my mom, you know, like like most of us that have go through this and, and you have someone that is one of the loves of your life, it's really difficult. And it's very difficult I think watching somebody who is so vibrant like you and, you know, who has like, is is just in life and giving it loud out and loving everything about it from food to travel, to mm-hmm. work, to our everything. And then to see her get smaller and smaller, but still try to stay who she is. And, and I think, you know, Go, if I jump to the end, I say, my God, my mom taught me so much with this disease. Like she taught me more than I could ever learn. What are some of the things that you, that she's taught you? You know, to be, to work with the hand you're dealt because that's all you have. And so you might as well, you might as well take it for all you can take all the good out of it. Enjoy what you can, you know live it, live that, live whatever you are, have, wherever you're at, live it. My mother, if, if you went, if you went to meet my mom, even in the last couple of years, you'd say, you know, Norma, how are you? Or your mommy, how are you doing? She'd go, I'm great. I'm alive. It's a, it, life is good. The alternative sucks. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, it, and she's always been that way. She was always like, you know, uh, have just a uh, a delicious um, appetite for everything. And so it made me realize that even someone who loved life so much could make her world smaller and still love it. Mm. 
And that's beautiful because for the grace of God, go any of us. That's so true. Do you, do you classify yourself, Susie, as like a sandwich generation caregiver? I do. I'm probably the beginning. I'm probably the earlier ones because, you know, I had, uh, a, my daughters were nine years apart. So my second daughter really like, she really felt if you have, if you saw my film, you'll she's portrayed in it and she's um, 15 in it. Mm-hmm. When my mom came to move with move in with us right out of on the tails of my divorce. And so, you know, it couldn't have been more stressful. <laughs> but, you know, I so I was raising a teenager smack dab in the middle of hormone hell. And then my mother going through you know, basically the same kind of sort of independent resistance. And, you know, like both of them were pushing me away like this, right? Because my mom was like, I don't have all the time. I'm not sick. I'm fine. You know, it's you. And so I really, it was the very tough year of Alzheimer's. And, but by the end of it, you know, both my daughter and I learned so much. And my daughter, when my mom had to move into assisted living, she was like, Like I say in the film, she said, I'm not ready for nanny to go. And it was a hard year. I have no doubt. It's, you know, the the caregiving season and yours was particularly long. It's like, are there parts of it that were more difficult than other parts? I, I think so. I think the year that I'm describing may have been the hardest because, and which is why I wanted her to live with me during that year. Because my mom, I, you know, I, I, I say that I was crossing her over the bridge mm. to acceptance. And, and so I feel. Were you already there? Were you already across no. the bridge? Yeah. You no, both were crossing it. Yeah. <laughs> both were. It was like, it was, it was, it was, you know, what is that? What's that, that saying? Like it was um, trial by error constantly, yeah. you know, because I mean, I look back at videos where I would, I literally cringe where I go, I see myself going, mom, what, what day is it? Mom, where do you live? Mom. You didn't that's, know. I didn't know. And, you know, and she, and my mom was so adorable. Like she'd go, I don't know. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I go, okay. Their brain is broken. And if someone's listening to that, like, what's wrong with those questions? It's like, you got to kind of meet them where they are in their reality. You and have to. Yeah. And it's Tipa so Snow beautiful. is a great person. Like we didn't know about Tipa Snow when we were starting all of this out, but you know, now she's a great, a great resource. What are some of the other resources that have helped you over the years? Like, you know, when you know better, you do better. Where mm-hmm. did you find support? I, I, I have to tell you like, in the beginning of my journey, I didn't know there wasn't that much support and, and there wasn't that much resource online. Even like, I remember going online and going, I mean, of course there was the Alzheimer's association. And then there was, you know, uh, there was some senior local senior, you know, living kind of, kind of community places you could take. I remember taking my mom to this, uh, cause my mom was a singer and I thought, Oh, this will be great. So I took her to this, like, core I was a choir that was all you know people with dementia and my mom who was such a snob about her voice that's the one thing she was a snob about because she was so good and my mom like, she just took over the room and then looked at me and went who are these people like she, <laughs> she, just, she owned it and then was like owned yeah. it, but then she was like I don't belong here like what is this you know so um you, you know, it's like, it's, it's, it's like being a mom again, in a way, because you have to, you have to let the person that you're caring for guide you mm. because you can't, you can't, you can't be a stage mom and you can't be a stage daughter. You have to let them, you know, is if, if you are, a, you love soccer your whole life and your daughter hates it, you can't force them to do that. No. And so you need to meet them where they're at, whether they have dementia or whether they're going through puberty or whether they're two years old or three years old that, you know, people have, people are, have their own, their own path, their own lane that they're going to choose and, and what makes them feel comfortable and safe and, and fulfilled. Where, so where, try. where were some of the places that you and your mom intersected as far as like, some of your happy memories, because I know, you know, so much of what we talk about in Alzheimer's is can be negative and there is joy, some joy in this process too. So where, where do you find, like, where have you found the most joy with your mama? 
Well, my mom, I mean, first of all, humor, music, humor, and music. I mean, <laughs> Those are great. I mean, eating and, you know, it's a lot of love and a lot of love. And, and, you know, we're very demonstrative Jewish family and we are like, you know, we are, we're, we love to love and, you know, and love is, love is, it's nonverbal, you know, you don't have to have words for it. it. It's felt babies feel it. People with dementia feel it when at the very end, you can get big smiles. My mom, I can make my mom laugh up to the day she died. Yes. I can make her laugh. I've seen and that. It. Was, yeah. And that's yeah. my joy. That was my joy. It's like, if I can get her to laugh, um, I'm golden. You're winning. You're winning. Uh -huh. And if people, you mentioned your difficult year and if people want to kind of get a glimpse of what your life was like, I, I have watched your, your short film. I loved it. Thank my you. mom and the girl. And um, I was looking to see where people could watch it. I know it's available on Google play. Is there anywhere else that people, or is that the best place to go? No, it's on you. It's on iTunes and, and Amazon. And, um, and if they want, I can give them a link because it's not a money making project for me. It's like, you know, I want everyone to see it because I feel like if you've been in this world and if, and if you're not familiar with dimension, it doesn't touch your world. It's still a story about leaning into people and, and looking at for the gifts that you get when something, when one skill or, you know, uh, ability, it get decreases, others get larger, mm. you know? And so, and always, even just regular old aging, I mean, people lose, they lose their filters and losing filters is not a bad thing. You know, it, it really can be, it's really kind of beautiful. That's why I love children and, and older people. Cause yeah. You They're get what you see. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you get You're fat. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, and my brother's neurodivergent. So I would add him to the mix too. Like he will yeah. tell me my hair, whatever. Yes. Uh -huh. Like and if you say, does this look good? They'll go, no. <laughs> no. Yeah. Even unsolicited, it is I what do. it is. So it, and it, it's an acquired taste, but I find humor in it. Um, I think it's refreshing. Sure. It it's is refreshing. refreshing. Because when you get a compliment, it's real. It is real. I know <laughs> he does. He does tell me all the time. I was a beautiful baby. I love that. Um, yeah. So you're my mom and the girl. I'm going to link to it in the show notes. Um, I feel like you have had a lot of amazing wins in your career as a filmmaker, a writer, producer, director, and you've done a lot of different things. Not all of it has been caregiving and Alzheimer's yeah. focused, but I, I find that when I follow you on social and I kind of see, I feel like the mom, my mom and the girl is, is my interpretation is that it's one of your proud moments. Like it is one of the things that you, why is that? Um, because, uh, I think because it's, 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 it was inspired and it's inspiring. And that's, and I think that, you know, we can only ask, I mean, those really are, that, that is your best joy is to inspire and to, I mean, joy comes from helping other people. At the end of the day, you can make as much money. I mean, look, I've done projects I'm super proud of, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm a 13 year old girl at all. I all will be 13 when I, when I die. That's just the way it is. I mean, I, I wrote and co and associate produced the Bratz movie for Lionsgate. I love that movie. I'm still proud of it because, you know, it. I mean little girls now watch it and go, Oh my God. Like I have fans on Instagram from brat little girls that love brats. And they, they are like, you know, they, they love me because they know I wrote it. And so, um, and that's, 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 a, that's a lovely thing for me. And then I, I did soul surfer, which was about Bethany yes. Hamilton and, I, and I'm super proud of that. But I think, you know, this, this is, this, this I mean, yes. Soul Surfer is inspiring. I can't, you can't say it yes. isn't, but it's not my story. Yes. So it, it was Bethany Hamilton and Bethany Hamilton is fierce and she was incredible and she still is fierce and incredible. But um, this is my mom. This is so personal. And I know that we're in a crisis. And so I, I, I feel like I'm bet that's my best voice that I, that I want to amplify I can amplify my other stuff. I'm doing a. I, I'm. I'm going to be directing a, a 
a movie from a book that I adapted that I was hired to adapt called Run based on a, on a book called Plain Jane. And it's and it's lovely. It's all and she's running a marathon the entire time. It's a it's a dark comedy, but it's you know, and I'll, I'll talk about that when it's out. I for sure will. Yes. I'm proud of that. But right now, I think platforms should be used to for there's I don't know. It, it's it well, it inspires. I feel like your first year, Alzheimer's Million, my mom and the girl, it inspires a different look at at a relationship with Alzheimer's. Like again, seeing the joy, seeing the positive, seeing the how it has shaped, you know, both you and your mom. And what an experience for you to to do that with Valerie Harper. That was her yes, last her nice. last um production that she had done. And, you know, now things are kind of turning into a different crisis for you. Sadly, I, you know, this is part of your story, too, is that, you know, in your mom, Norma's end of life, she was she spent the last five years in a um, a long term care community mm -hmm. in Los Angeles, and it had five star reviews. And tell us a little bit more. I know you shared that, you know, obviously you're 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 working on a documentary that's yes. going to educate people about this crisis around yes. long-term care. But what is your piece of the story that you can share with, that you're comfortable sharing with oh, us? I'm, I'm comfortable in sharing. I mean, we are going through a, there's a systemic healthcare crisis in long-term care. It's been going on, not, not <laughs> for, for if this is not new, it's been for several decades. I mean, there hasn't been any, real regu federal reg regulations since 1987 so mm -hmm. it's been a while and um and and it's just it, it hasn't gotten better it's only gotten worse and we only saw that and i only saw that during covid covid was you know there was a there was a, a silver lining to covid for our community because it really pulled the curtain back on a lot of shenanigans that were going on yeah, and, and helping us see the caregiver and how vital we are in this process. Right. Is certainly a silver lining for sure. Definitely. You know, I mean, we we were kept from our loved ones for a long time. I didn't see my mom for 13 months. Whoa. Person, yeah. And, you know, and then yeah, and they it, the understaffing that was going on unbeknownst to most of us. Um, we was so apparent once you know they started when people were had were having to quarantine and and staff members were having to quarantine and there was they were understaffed you know it's just just so they already have a hard time keeping people like i right. i know my mom wasn't in a skilled nursing but she was in a assisted living community right. and i have my own stories about that we've tried two different ones and it just wasn't a fit for us. I don't know who it's a fit for, but it wasn't a fit for us. Um, but the same kind of thing, the turnover, the the craziness, um, and you know, being an advocate. I it's know it's a yeah, it's a listen, it's it's a business, and businesses are 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 set up to make money. They're they're not, you know, these even if they're nonprofit, they're still profit. You can't run a nonprofit without paying people. So you know, and there's a lot of nonprofits there's that are, you know, doing wonderful things. And then there's quite a few, quite a lot. Yeah. Bigger percentage that aren't doing such wonderful things. And the problem is, is that we have a help. We have, uh, we have the, the workers that are stuck in this system that is set to, it's set up to fail for them. For our for doctors and nurses and peoples with people with good intentions, CNAs and everybody that works within that system with in that in that framework and and they they can't they can't work within it. It's it's almost it's just it's a few it's an exercise in futility because if you have any any empathy and and ethics, you you can't you can't last. Right. It's too hard, and they're underpaid. And over yeah. words. So, so it's a, it's a bit of a lose, lose. What was your experience, Susie? Like when you, after you were able to see your mama, Norma, like what, what was evident, like what was apparent to you? Right. Well, uh, so we were only allowed to zoom, like I said, the first 13 months and zoom once a week. 
And, you know, that Zoom became our lifeline. Mm. Well, it, you know, as you can imagine, it's difficult to Zoom with someone who's in later stages of dementia because, you know, it's just difficult. And my daughter had just had a baby. And so the two of them, <laughs> trying to get them to connect over Zoom was just, you know, that that was a comedy. I mean, my mom's over here and she doesn't know what I mean. And the baby. And then eventually they ended up figuring out how to connect. And we all figured out how to connect because we did it enough to figure it out. But what I kept noticing was that my mom was was really quickly becoming less and less functionable, functioning uh, the way that she was before. She also didn't look right. And then I started seeing her in bed at three in the afternoon. And I kept saying, I would ask the CNA, do you know why my, is my mom ill? Like it's three in the afternoon. Why isn't she dressed in, a, you know, at mm. least in her chair? And I don't know, Susie, I don't know, but it's crazy over here. It's crazy right now, which is, it's awful. And I would just go, well, can you find out from the nurse, like if there's anything wrong? I mean, she shouldn't be in bed all the time. And, you know, that's when I started to to notice that there was, she was not getting the the help that the she activity. needed. Do you think they were over medicating them to kind of keep them I know my mom, my mom, before that, before this ever happened, my mom was on a, a drug called Depakote. This was eight years ago. That's what put her in a wheelchair. Mm. So, um, you know, and that was at an assisted living, another five-star place. So, you know, this, that's a whole nother subject, which yeah. is, you know, no, I is, get it. I get it. Like, I mean, I know my mom, you know, in our, our experience in assisted living, like she, they had the same, one of the things that was frustrate me is that the nurses or the people who were doing the medicine, my mom was diabetic and the people who were doing the meals and getting people to the dining room and the assisted living were all the same people. And so because they wouldn't give my mom, um, they only did the insulin in a private, private room, she, they would take care of everything else, you know, the food, getting the people down there, and then they would come and get her and do the insulin. And by the time, you know, she needed help with the wheelchair at some point getting down, it was like people were already leaving. She gets stuck with, you know, somebody that was, you know, she didn't have anything in common with. And then finally she just stopped going down to the room and then they started bringing food to her that was cold and not the same. Uh, and it just was like a, you know, a spiral. And I was like, why do you have the same people doing all this stuff? So the next time we went to a different assisted living, that right. was a question I learned, like we're learning, right? Like here's, yeah. do you have the same people doing this and this? They're like, no, we have separate med techs. We bring it by in a cart. And so the first place I picked for the amenities um, for sure. And then the second place for sure for the care. And now like I have a whole list of questions and things for people to observe. What is some of your advice? Like after you have gone through this, like what, what would you, um, for a caregiver who's looking at long-term care community? You, well, here's the thing in that you have, you, nobody knows your person that you love more than you, nobody, not a doctor, not, and you know, and there's every, every, Every disease has its own set of, of particular, you know, circumstance. Like your mom had di was diabetic, and that that brings a whole other, you know, list of, of things that you need to pay attention to as mm -hmm. as the caregiver for someone with dementia. You know, not everybody under most people don't understand dementia, so they misinterpret. They they do, and they, you know, I mean, when my mom was in the hospital earlier this year, I remember calling because I couldn't visit her. I, and um, I said, can I, can I please FaceTime with her? And the, the charge nurses, the head nurse said, honey, she doesn't talk. Well, honey, she's intubated and honey, she has Alzheimer's. She needs to see her daughter. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't, it, it, it should just be enough. Like you said, you're the expert and yes. your mom and you're the expert in care and you're the client. And yes. So that's you, be, yeah, yes. that's my advice is that you, so when you, when, wherever you, whatever you have to do with your, your loved one, if you have to put them in long-term care, there's no shame in that because sometimes, you know, we, well, I'm not equipped to do all the things. I wasn't trained in that. I am a very good CNA though now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've gotten your master's in caregiving. I've got my master's in it, <laughs> but I mean, you know, there's, 
there's skills that we don't have. There's equipment that we don't have. And, you know, sometimes you just can't do it in your own home. I wish I could have done that. Sometimes I just wish I had, I could just go to my mom and just go, you know, get, jump into her bed with her and, and, you know, snuggle. And, but it wasn't, it wasn't realistic, but you have to stay in touch. You have to be active. You have to be a part of that care team. If you're not, you don't know what's going on and you are the one. And you, and if you're not involved, believe me, they know it. Mm-hmm. Because take advantage of it. they will take advantage of it. And, and that's just a fact. That's just down to, you know, economic. That, that's in a hospital situation too, for sure. It's like, I used to always wonder, like you'd see these people in a bed by themselves and and you go and visit your loved one over and over again. And it's like, nobody's ever visiting these people. Nobody's ever... No, there's and, a term. Someone just told me a term. It's called throwaways. I was just interviewing somebody yesterday for my who is a nurse. And one of the things they call, you know, it's like this this little thing that they call, you know, in their industry, the nurses and CNAs are called. Th- they call them throwaways because they don't have to deal with these people that don't have advocates. Yeah, that's heartbreaking. That's heartbreaking. And it's you know, it is hard to I, I think to your point about the judgment and everybody's situation is different. Like I know for my mom, I was not equipped to be able to take care of her full time in my home, you know, kids working and she needed a high level of care. She was morbidly obese and lots of different things. So I do hope that the judgment of caregivers, like, I don't want this to be like a working mom, non-working mom situation. Like, like all caregivers are caregivers. And I think that's a misnomer that because your loved one might be in a a community does not mean that you still don't have a caregiving role. You still have a caregiving role. You have a massive caregiving role, you know, and I, I, and I, I mean, I, I tell people all the time, like when my mom got into this facility, this was five years ago, this is when she ran out of money because like I said, Alzheimer's can be a long disease and, and care is expensive. So you will run out of money. Unless you're a billionaire, unless unless you're Elon Musk, you're going to run out of money at some point and you're going to be on Medicare and Medi-Cal or Cade, whichever one, whatever it is in your state. But, you know, I I got my mom into this wonderful place. It's beloved here in Los Angeles. And I literally was like, ah, I, I can sleep at night. I don't have to be a helicopter daughter. I can do my life and I can visit my mom and and you know, I can take part in the caregiving, you know, the, the, the monthly meetings that they have, you know, for their caregiving plan and, you know, all that stuff. And I thought, I really believed that it was all happening. I really believed it, but unbeknownst to me, my mom was, was walking around with a a level, a stage three, you know, pressure wound a year before before she went into the hospital in January when it was stage four. And even when I visited her, God bless her, she didn't give me signs of that. I just, I knew something was off, but yeah. How many stages of bed wounds are there? Or, there's or... there's four stages. Yeah. And, and, you know, let me be very clear. Let me, let me clarify that if it gets past stage two, it's neglect. Mm. People get bed sores because if they're sitting too much or I, you and I would. My mom got them and my sister was a, you know, helicopter, yeah. lived with my mom caregiver. I mean, it can happen, but she was on it. You know what I right. mean? And they were treating it and moving her and she had a special bed. And right. so it it can happen for it sure. It can and it will situation. happen. Yes. It, it can and it will happen. And those, I mean, that's the number one thing that you should be looking for. You know, if you're a care, if you're in the, in the healthcare, nursing home, long-term care community as a, as a worker, that's what you're trained for. I mean, that's number one fall, no falling, no bed sores, you know, and that, I mean, that's, that's number one on the number one and two on the list. So if it gets past the stage two, that means they're just not taking care of it. It should never get past stage two ever, ever. And I, you know, one of the things that I hope my documentary, which by the way is called no country for old people, because there is, there is no country for old people right now. We're not the only country that's failing. But, you know, so this this is like a global issue. But I think, you know, we don't know, like I didn't know what a bed sore really was. Did you? 
Uh, not until my sister, you know, would sent me a picture, um, yeah. you know, that even now sometimes come up when I'm looking at things and I'll see like, scary, oh gosh, right? yeah, they're scary. Yeah. They're scary. And my mom was bedridden, like she was yeah. bedridden for two years. So the chances of her getting a bed sore were, um, were, Extremely were great. High. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, they need to be moving them and having wedges and the special things underneath. And so there are a lot of questions and things that we can you could look for. I mean, sadly, Susie, you are the best, quote unquote, best person that this trauma could happen to because you're a filmmaker, you're a storyteller, you're not afraid to like dive in and dig and get to the hard truths of things. And you're a respected caregiver advocate. So like who better to make serious waves in this crisis than you? Thank you. Thank you so much. I mean, <clears throat> it's funny when you you, I grew up in this industry, like, you know, people would always say, oh, you're, you're such a surprise. Like people underestimate a lot of women, women, right. It just happens that way. And I felt, I felt the same way in the caregiving community when I would go into the, the, the long term, you know, the facilities and they would, they would just, you know, patronize me. Oh, your mom's fine. I mean, she could be bleeding out of her ear and they'd go, oh, that's okay. Cause it's not infected, you know, because they just thought they could, they could just, talk talk circles around me but they didn't know who they were messing with yeah I, I, sure. where where is the documentary in the process like where is it now that the no i am uh, i am re i'm i'm in the middle of uh writing this script which when i say script because it's all real i'm i'm writing the story of that happened from january 17th to july 6 17th so it's such a perfect hero's journey my mother's last 6 months mm -hmm. and i'm using that as as the the spine of this documentary that will include other stories that will you know corroborate what happened to my mom and then i'm going to i have so many experts that have jumped on in in our industry that you know, that are incredible people from, you know, the National Consumer Voice, who mm -hmm. are my fiscal sponsors and, and Canner here in, in, in California, who are amazing advocates and, and the, the Grey Panthers in New York, who are, you know, United Nations, I mean, they're globally supportive, like, like fierce, fierce people that are, that are it. way smarter than me that will bring the hows and the whys and the calls to action that we need to take. So I'm hoping to to bring the heart and the story that will get the attention of the public that is so so desperately needed. Because listen, this is my mom's story, but it it is not just hers; it's all of ours. It's a lot a lot of people's story, and we'll link also where how people can contribute to the documentary project. You. You'll see that in the show notes page. What are you hoping this? the change that this inspires like what would you love to see happen um i i hope to punch everybody <laughs> in the gut and 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 wake everybody up to know that this is what this is what long term care health looks like because and it's not just older people it's it's anybody it's you know people that are uh like there was a a guy in the forum last night that i was on with the gray panthers who was 32 years old and was in a car accident at 17 and lost two legs and he is bedridden yeah right now and so you know and he is he he has stories to tell so so it does it's not just older people that are affected but what the change that I want to see is like that everybody knows what's going on so that there's power and knowledge and that we know because listen it's not like all of these amazing advocacy coalitions haven't been to the Congress and almost, almost passed bills that needed to be passed. It's going to take a, it's going to take a monumental movement like the Me Too movement. Mm. So that, that where, where we shame, we shame the upper tier into having to do what needs to be done. We have is, it, to. is it more pay for the people who work there? Is it more it's appropriate pay? Yeah. Appropriate it's, it's, pay. It's, it's, it's incentivizing people to come back to this workforce because nurses, amazing nurses and CNAs and people that are skilled have left in droves because it's, it's, they're not compensated. The job is hard and they're, and they're, the ratio is way off. They're handcuffed to the mm -hmm. system. So that's, that's what I hope that we can fix, you know, tear down this broken system and re rebuild it so that it, it's, people over profit and not profit over people. Mm. 
Is there yeah. anybody doing it well? Like yeah, any there's a couple countries that are doing it, you know, and I am actually, I, there was a caregiver that I, that I am in love with Patrick Berglund from, from Switzerland, who I met through my film. I've never met him in person and he's a vocational caregiver, you know, working within their system. And I mean, he's celebrated. He's on the cup. I mean, he, they call him the singing caregiver because he uses music. He's this handsome young guy who with his two grown daughters and he absolutely loves the the loves working in that community. And I'm going to have him in in the documentary because I want it. I want people to hear how it can work and how it's a beautiful experience. Yeah. Show him what good looks like. And yeah. yeah, I think there's been a lot of great ideas that have, you know, kind of heard about, like, you know, blending multiple generations, like co college kids with older adults. And, sure. you know, yeah, like there's there's got to be a better way for sure. There's much better ways. It's just but it's like anything. Follow the money. Follow yeah. the money, follow the money, and you'll find out where the where the problem is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We would be remiss, Susie, if we didn't also mention that you have your own podcast. I um, do. Yeah, with Don Priest, um, Love Conquers Alls. And then also your super fun podcast, I Love Lucifer. Um, yes. Talk about what, you know, what, what makes these podcasts uh, unique in their own way. Okay, well, Love Conquers All is really just it's an extension of my of my mom and the girl because I wanted to change the 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 conversation, which I think I have I've helped to do. And, and the movie continues to do that, which is to, to like you already mentioned it, you know, looking at it, looking at this disease and not with with love and with with acceptance and 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 taking away the stigma. And I wanted to keep the conversation going Mm -hmm. after that so i did i started that love conquers alls and i wanted to keep it upbeat and and real not i don't want to sugarcoat it but i just want to say okay so here's the, here's the bad parts but here's how we get here's how we can deal with it here's how we navigate it here's how we can make the best of it because it, it can be a long disease and why should we why should we get robbed of everything mm -hmm. right so so yeah so i we talk about that that's it. And it's, and Don and I are crazy and have fun. And we, we hope to, that you get a laugh out of it too. And um, yeah, we, we, we received best podcast 2020, the, the year that I launched, which was amazing for me. Yes. And um, that was with the new media film festival. So we were very proud of that. And, um, and the second one we started during COVID, which was, I love Lucifer, which is based on a, on a series that we were developing for Fox. And then, you know, COVID came and we thought we're so bored. Why don't we just do a narrative podcast? That'll be easy. We basically, it was, it's the hardest thing we've ever done because it was just the two of us. And, uh, but we ended up with 10 episodes for our first season, which is done, which is, you know, on the Realm Network, which you can find on everywhere, you know, on every platform. We were nominated for seven Audioverse Awards and we were finals for those. And we have, it's a it's a comedy horror, two, two B movie stars who fight movie monsters by day and real monsters by night. And that is the concept. It's super it, fun. It's Let's super check funny it out. and scary. And, um, but, but fun. And it's a, and it's a girl duo. It's female driven. And if you like Adam Levy from the Witcher, he's, he's our lead. Uh, he plays the father and he also plays our narrator and he's just an amazing, just beautiful actor. He's also on industry. He's a regular on industry. I so, love it. It's yeah, very it's unique. It's a very unique podcast for sure. I, I get a lot of joy too, Susie, when I see, um, We'll put links to all that in the show notes. But when I we talk about self care on the show, and I love watching your hip hop dances, yeah. is that one of your main go tos to kind of just relieve? Totally, pressure? totally. I, I when my when going back to my divorce, <laughs> like ten years ago, and when my mom moved in with me there, I discovered this hip hop class at, at the at the gym that was like walking distance for me, and I was like, I'm doing this. And we actually, I, and it became my medit my meditation really, because when you're dancing, you can't think of anything else, but where's your body going and the music. That's all. So true. You know, you're present for sure. You have to be present. You can't think of anything for a whole hour. And, and, and it's so, it's, first of all, your endorphins get going. It's so healthy. You're going to lose weight. You're going to feel good. You're going to feel, and it's like, dancing I just can't I can't recommend it enough because it's like 
it's a community thing too. So when you dance with other people and you're con- and you're synchronized, oh my God, it feels like the best sex ever. Oh, just- wow. <laughs> well, you sold it to me. I'm like, I'm going to put that on my 20 for 2023 list of Do like, it, girl. Do it. Up. Like, I don't know if I have the moves, but it sounds like a lot of fun. I need to give it a try. Oh, there's also, there's a bunch of different classes. It doesn't have to be hip hop. I mean, you can, my friend- I used to be jazzercise. I was a jazzercise. Whatever, even if you Zumba, if I can't find another, I'll do anything. If it's moving to music, I'm there. Yeah. Do it. Perfect. Just move. It's so much fun. It keeps you young and healthy. And like I, we competed a, a, a little crew of ours from this class and we won. And I was like, it's better than winning an Emmy. I'm telling you, I was like, oh my God, I brought it. And I felt so good. And I was probably twice as old as everybody there. So, which is, yeah, which makes it even better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Well, so, yeah. I want to, I want to dig into a little more of your self care. I'm going to ask you some questions for the lightning round of from my book, the Just For You Daily Self Care Journal. So, whatever comes to mind, there's no, no wrong answers here. This is a good one, though. It says, when you are older, and need care, what do you hope someone does for you? Puts um, lip liner on my lips. <laughs> <Number one. laughs> pluck the hairs, yeah, from my chin, please pluck, shave my please mustache. Pluck my hairs, pluck my hairs, and make sure. <laughs> That's true, though. Yes. Yeah. And keep, keep, make sure music's around and, and yummy food. I love it. That's doable. Um, Okay, we've kind of talked about this. Okay, if you were to lose all your possessions, what item would you miss the most? Uh, all of them, like anything? Yeah. Uh, my computer. Why is that? Because it's my lifeline to the world. Yeah. And to connection. my creativity. So if I have a laptop or a phone, whatever, I can be creative. Yeah, that's Creativity good. is is is... For me, that's also very nourishing. I love it. How would you spend a day if you had it all to yourself? That's a big question. I have a lot of days to myself. That's why I'm wondering. I'm thinking now I do. Are you thinking like if I was caregiving? No, I mean, if it brings you joy, like what's something you would do? Because sometimes people struggle, like what? what brings them joy what brings you joy like what would you a want lot to be of doing? things bring me joy i mean i love i love being with my family and my girls and my and now i have two little baby granddaughters i can't believe i'm a grandma i guess if i i love being with my family i love playing i love being creative even if it's with with a three-year-old and we're and we're drawing on the floor that's good for me putting yeah. on the music and dancing you know just putting on frozen or you know, the little mermaid and I'll sing every song singing at the piano. I play piano. My, my whole family is musical. I grew up in the music industry. So uh, you can't, I can't have a bad day if we're singing. I love that. Little mermaid is, is a classic for sure. The best. Yeah. Yes. I love that. Is there anything else Susie that you, you know, we're like, we can't put a bow on this episode until we something else that you just want to Put out there, or have we pretty much covered? Oh my gosh, we, I know, I think we covered okay. everything really quick, right? Didn't have it. Yeah. yeah, how do people get in touch with you? Like, how do they stay? Where's the best way for people to kind of make sure that they're plugged in and they know what's when your projects are coming out and what's happening? Yeah. Um, I listen, social media, that's the biggest problem is there's so much of it. There's too many. There's too many, and I can't keep up. You can't work and be creative and then try to do all that. So, but I am on everywhere. I'm on I'm on Instagram and and LinkedIn and and Twitter still. I yeah. And um and, and I'm trying to do TikTok TikTok not as much as you. You're you have a very good presence on TikTok. It's hard. It's hard. Do, there's too much to do. And then and where else am I? Facebook, of course, you know, and it's all Susie Singer Carter. There's, and I also, my company's Go Girl Media. That's another problem. Then you have projects, then you have separate IDs for your projects. So, oh gosh. We'll never and, be bored. That's what I no, say. No, no. So yeah, you can find me anywhere. And if you want to email me, I don't care. Susie Singer Carter at gmail.com. I'm, I'm wide open. Just don't, be nice. Just don't. Just I'm be very nice. Sensitive. Tell them what your shirt. Sensitive. Yeah. What does your shirt say again? Um, my my shirt says, uh, "In a world where you can be anything, be kind. Be kind. Yes. Yeah. So let's. I love that. Let's let's leave them with that. Thank you yeah. so much for coming on. I'm a fan. 
of everything that you're doing. And um, I, I just love that caregiving brought us together. Ditto. Ditto. It's, do you know, it was a year ago that you and I, that you were on my show. Ah, I thought, I, how appropriate. This is great because you're a busy bee and I'm a busy bee. And um, yeah, you're, this woman is so busy and, and like, I don't know where you get all your energy from. Okay. Well, <laughs> yeah. It's like, there's, I, yeah, it's hard to turn the brain off sometime. I am going to take a pause in December, no podcasting, no Instagram lives, and just really kind of pull back and, and enjoy the holidays and do some planning um, and put more of that white space, I think, in my year next year, for sure. I think that's important. Not me too. I, I decided I have to take a hiatus. I haven't taken one in so long. So I will be doing the same thing. So, well, that's yeah, good. We got to practice what we preach. We got to practice what we preach. I'm like walking the walk. I got to figure out how to infuse self-care just like everybody else. So absolutely. Well, thank you again for having thank me. Thank you. On. Yeah. Great to and, see and you. I wish everybody a great year, wherever you're listening to this, just, you know, and, and just take care of yourself and, and enjoy your life because it's it blinking your 90. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today on the Happy Healthy Caregiver podcast on the Whole Care Network. As always, show notes that accompany today's episode can be found on my website, happyhealthycaregiver.com. Just look under the podcast menu for today's episode image, and that will take you to the page with the links and information we spoke about today. You'll also find other resources on the website, along with links to purchase the Just For You Daily Self-Care Journal. When you purchase from my website, you'll get a signed copy and for a limited time, free shipping. If you've enjoyed what you heard today, consider subscribing to the show on your podcast platform. It really helps other family caregivers find the podcast and you'll automatically receive our bi-weekly shows in your podcast listening queue. Maybe while you're subscribing, consider leaving a five-star rating and review or just simply talk it up on your social channels. Let's stay connected. I'm on Instagram and Facebook as Happy Healthy Caregiver. And until we meet again, please take care of you. This is the Whole Care Network. Helping you tell your story one podcast at a time.